Hello and welcome to Archie Corner. This is episode number 24. And today's video will be a quick introduction to structures. Specifically, what is the difference between structural members, such as the difference between girders, beams, joists, rafters, trusses, studs, sill plates, top plates, etc. This idea was in part requested by Christina Garvey, and I sure hope I'm pronouncing that name correctly. So Christina, if you're listening, thank you very much. So, let's get started, shall we? Structures can be a complex theme, especially because there's so many things out there that sometimes contradict each other or just seem plain confusing. For example, when looking through Google uh, and typing in what is the difference between a beam and a girder, one of the top hits gives a definition that says something like this. The main difference between a girder and a beam is the size of the components. And I don't know, but that, that definition just doesn't make sense to me. I mean, it's partly right, but if somebody was to ask you what's the difference between a leg and an arm, would you really say, well, the difference between your arm and your leg is that your leg is longer than your arm? Is that really how you would define it? I mean, you can say that about your fingers. Your fingers are, uh, you know, shorter than your legs. Your nose is shorter than your legs. But that's not how you compare them, right? And even though that may be right for humans, it may not be right for other animals like primates. A gorilla, for example, has arms that are longer than their legs. So that wouldn't be a correct assumption that legs are longer than arms. Instead, if you look for the definition of what a leg is, it says something like this. A leg is a limb on which a person or animal walks and stands. And that makes sense, right? I mean, that's the main purpose of our legs, to walk and stand. And even though some animals use their arms to help or aid in walking, they're not the primary reason that they have arms. I mean, that's what they have legs for. So it's the purpose of what their body members do that give them the name. It has nothing to do with the size. So why should it be any different with structural components when you think about it? You shouldn't be thinking about sizes. You should be thinking about what that member does. What's the purpose for it in that structure? Let's take a look at this quick example. By looking at this two by four, would you say that this two by four is a joist? Is it a rafter? Well, the truth is that you can't tell what it will be. I mean, this two by four can serve many purposes. Looking at a typical residential cross section, this is the typical diagram you might see. And applying names to it, assuming that this is all framed with a two by four, you have your vertical members within the walls, which are made of studs. And then at the top and the bottom of the wall, you have your plates. At the bottom, you have your sill plate. And at the top, you have your top plate, oftentimes a double top plate. Then on your floor, you have joists, which run horizontally and they're usually laid on their side, and they're joist. And if you're looking at this carefully, then you see that there's a couple of locations where you see joist, one at the floor and one at the ceiling or roof. So to differentiate these, even though both are technically joists, you can say that one is a floor joist and the other one is a ceiling joist or a roof joist, which in this case is technically the same. Now, as you get to your roof structure, something interesting happens because we already talked about the ceiling joists. Now, if the member is angled, then it's a rafter. Now, oftentimes this creates kind of a triangular shape. As an assembly, the rafter and the joist makes up a truss. And oftentimes in between the rafters and the joists, you have webs. All these members in the middle are called webs or in between. Except for the one in the middle. If there's a member in the middle, then it's called a king post. But as an assembly, this triangular area in this instance is called a truss. Now, if you've gotten to this point of the video, you can see that the names of different members in the structure have nothing to do with the size. Like I said, this entire section could have been built with two by fours, but it's where that two by four is and what purpose it serves that is called a stud, a joist, a rafter, 
a sill plate, a top plate, etc. Now we've addressed most of the structural members that we talked about in the beginning, except for two, girders and beams. Now to explain that, let's think of a structure where you need to span a roof over it. As you can see here, if you try to use wood joists, you won't reach that far. So you need a wall to support those joists. And then if you want to reach all the way to the other side, then you put another wall, more joists, a wall, more joists, and then you finish with the joists. But could you get rid of these walls? The answer is yes. You could get rid of them, but then you have to put beams so that your beams can support your joists. And you see, there's where this starts to come into play. Your beams usually carry the load of your joists. But if you're able to get rid of some of the walls, could you get rid of some of the columns too? Well, some probably, yes. But then you have to put girders in place so that they can carry the load of your beams. And then that way your beams can carry the load of your joists. And see, there it is. It's not that hard, is it? I mean, once you know what's going on, then you can see how it plays out. And thereby they need to be bigger members. So there's gonna be times in the structure when all you need is joists. And there's other times when you need joists and beams. And there'll be other times when you have joists, beams, and girders. But hopefully this way you understand what is what. And that is a very, very key principle of understanding structures. If you try to understand structures without first understanding or learning the name of each member and knowing why it's that, why it's called that, what the purpose of it is, then you're going to get lost pretty quick. So if you hear that explanation again where somebody says, well, girders are bigger than beams then I don't know. If you heard that before, you probably need a different teacher. <laughs> oh, maybe not. I don't know, maybe you do. But the point is, maybe that person doesn't know what the difference is either. But now that you understand what it is, hopefully when somebody asks you what's the difference between a beam and a girder, you can explain to them how each one carries a different load and when one is needed and if it's a bit confusing for you to try to explain it to them you can always send them to this video <laughs> well i hope that cleared up some basic concepts of structural terms actually i am going to interrupt myself for a quick second before i finish this video i worked on this video pretty much all day yesterday and hopefully i'll upload it today so that you guys can watch it but that's actually a good thing. Normally this video is taking me three days or, or maybe sometimes even more to get done. The downside is that it's not 100% animation. Uh, this video had a little bit of a mix, right? It had a bit of it of me talking, a little bit of the animation portion, and even a bit of a 3D graphic, which is the first time I used those graphics to begin with. But I wanted to get an input from you. If you could please leave in your comments. Let me know what you liked about this video. What you didn't like about it. About it. Like I said, one of the reasons I, I, I did it this way is just because of time. If there's a way that I can figure out how to make more videos and not spend so much time, I think it'll help me in general try to get the, the videos out. So it'll be interesting for me to just get... A quick recap from you guys before you leave today just take a quick minute to leave a comment that would help me a lot because it would just let me know if if it's something that you guys liked the hope being of course that if i can find ways that i can make a video and spend less time doing them then i can provide more videos right so i guess there has to be a balance in there somewhere but i wanted to just throw that out there and if i can hear from you that would be great now back to myself. And well, that's it for today. I hope that this helped you understand the difference between different structural members and hopefully it cleared out some of that clout. Before you skip on to the next video, please don't forget to like this video, 
Don't forget to share it with others who you think might be able to benefit from this information. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. It helps me a lot, believe it or not. It was a pleasure talking to you all today, but for now, this is Archie Corner signing out.